Caddis Maximus here, this time reviewing the S&G Tool Aid Corp uh, Automotive Short Circuit or 12 Volt. Actually, it says 6 or 12 Volt Short Finder. It comes in these little plastic cases. I know Napa sold them for a while. They've been around for decades. They're actually still sold today on Amazon, the little red one. Uh, the 25100 is actually on Amazon. It was like 30 or $35. And then they have one where you, a blue one, where you inject an audio signal. And it's like $55. And I believe the difference between the two is whether it's a hot test or an online or an offline test. What that means is that there's some type of short circuit. A short circuit is where one wire has rubbed and is now touching another wire or touching you know, some kind of metal component. And so the, so the electrical pathway is now sh taking a shorter route rather than through the light bulb or whatever components it's supposed to, hence a short circuit. There are ones where you need to actually have electricity going to the circuit, such as uh, this automotive one. You would leave the battery connected. You'd have some type of short circuit where you have a fuse that is blown, and when you replace it, it just blows the fuse again. And then whatever light bulb or, or component isn't working indicates that you have a short circuit. So this is a tool to help that. What this does is it has, it's like a little analog needle. It's not a multimeter. It's, it's set up to uh, read current. It just has a couple little washers on the back, and I believe it uses the case. And so uh, when it gets near a changing magnetic field, it induces a voltage and makes the needle move back and forth. And that's how all these devices work, is they use basically alternating current. It wouldn't be specifically alternating current, just a changing magnetic field. And that's how these work. Is This inside here is just an inline like automotive flasher relay. It's a bimetallic relay. And how it works is it simply clicks on and off. And so what it's doing is it's running power through the wire and then disconnecting again and then running power through the wire and disconnecting. And that will cause this needle here to jump when you wave it near the wire. So you'd hook it up essentially to where the fuse was blowing. You may have to take apart the fuse or get some special components that allow you to uh, take a reading from a fuse panel. You would hook this up and then turn on, you know, whatever, like your if your headlights aren't working, you turn on your headlights. And then this thing would pulse, and then you just go and wave this around. You'd be under the dash and under the hood, trying to follow the wiring harness. And this needle would be jumping back and forth, and I'll demonstrate that now. We've got a pretty big power supply, so when you get it on there, you can see how that needle, let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. You can see how the needle's going crazy, and that's just because this thing is turning off and on repeatedly. Let me, you can probably hear it. Whoop, I think it uh, had a little issue there. Now, when I said that this was a auto, uh, inline flasher relay, this is just a plastic cup, and this is kind of the offensive part of this product, is it's really a cash cow product. This type of thing that'd be Harbor Freight for three to five dollars. It is higher quality, it is made in America, they have a nice plastic box. Uh, they do have instructions. Before I forget, I'll show the instructions because this is kind of weird. They don't, they tell you not to um, use it with electronics such as computers, sensors, etc. And the reason for that is, is because it's, this is just an inline relay. It's a, a one that's rated at 12 volts, at least 10 amps. It's a bimetallic, so what's inside here is just two pieces of metal sandwiched together with a little contact, and when power goes through it, uh, eventually it heats up and the little contact springs up and it cools off and closes back down. This thing does, after you use it for a while, get up to like 100 degrees. It does get pretty hot. This is actually an American-made uh, bimetallic switch, so it is you know pretty high quality. It's 105 degrees uh, Celsius rated, pretty good quality wire. They didn't put any kind of real strain relief there. It's just these plastic cups and this plastic tube. But for $35, it's just way too much money for an inline relay. And that's kind of the point, is you can put together a couple of wire leads, solder them to a fuse, and use an automotive inline relay and then you can use something like an amp meter to do something relatively similar although it's not as sensitive as this little gauge that they, it comes with anyway it just makes a real subtle clicking when it's operating we'll just turn that back on again and so what I mean by being able to use a current meter is what we have here is a uh, an old micron needle type amp meter 
and it barely whoops and it barely moves the needle when you're next to it if you actually clamp on then we can actually see the relay working and so this that's all that this thing is is just the same kind of device just super sensitive like super low voltage and the way it's set up is that field just induces a current into it and causes the needle to bounce around there are electronic short circuit tracers and I'll do a review on one in the future but this is kind of like the, the one that I thought used to be sold for like 20 bucks maybe it was more expensive um, but just seeing it for 33 on Amazon is way too much money just for a little you could order from an electronics store just a little uh, current gauge and just do the same thing where you bond the terminals to the, the body and you would get the same effect now the reason they say don't use this on computers and fuel injectors, sensors, is because those can easily, easily be blown out by too much current. Uh, traditional light bulb or LED lights have built-in you know, resistors. A light bulb is a resistor in and of itself. When it starts to glow, its resistance goes up. So light bulbs are actually self-balancing. It's the actual thickness and length of the filament is what determines the wattage that goes through a light bulb. But once they start glowing, they start self-limiting their power because the resistance glow goes up as their illumination uh, comes on. The reason this thing's an issue, and I wanted to show the digital multimeter or amp clamp meter, is on this one, it's peaking about 5, and that's the average. But I wanted to show how much power is actually going through it. We have a 20 amp or a 19 amp power supply, but with upgraded uh, output. We got this on DC amps. And we'll do our max here. So 22 amps. Because it's only pulsing for a quick second, it's not causing my power supply to shut down. And that's the real reason. You know, if we go to average. We're like 5.4, about the very same as what the analog. The analog is pretty good. But this maximum peak could easily blow out a variety of components in your vehicle. And so that's kind of why I'm not super fond of these is because they can't be used on everything. And oftentimes your short circuit is related to a sensor or a fuel injector or something like that. Which makes this thing only useful for troubleshooting things like trailer wiring traditional incandescent light bulbs because there is if it's a low current circuit it's just not going to generate a strong enough field to get the little needle to move any other way i've always wanted to do a little review of these and seeing how expensive they are i figured maybe i could save somebody some money because they're really uh more for troubleshooting you know cars that were made in the 70s 80s you know early 90s and 2000s and above it's also electronic uh there's only so many circuits that are going to be at least you know 10 amp capable that you're going to be better off with one of the more modern radio based circuit tracer uh tools like harbor freight has and actually i'll do a review of one of those real soon here Anyway, that was it for the review of the SNG Tool Aid uh, Automotive Short Circuit Finder. Just wanted to do a demonstration of these. It's, you know, a pretty neat idea and super basic, and it's just way too expensive for what it is because all you're doing is plugging in and unplugging a wire, generating a crude kind of AC, and then a, just a really sensitive uh, needle that you wave near the wires. Just a lot of money. Even though they, I believe they still are American made, even American made, come on guys, you know, charge $10 for this thing. Anyway, I'll end this review here. I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.